Maharaj, uh, shall I share the screen for the words? We have 11 devotees now. Um, yeah, I'll just begin with the invo invocation. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmili Tam Yena Tas Mai Shri Devaha Shri Chaitanya Manavi Stam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Pidam Mayam Gadati Swam Pidati Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvase Sasunyavari Astyat Yade Sitari Jai Sri Krishna Pajakalpa Thru Vischa Kripa Siddha Veva Cha Patita Nampavle Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Siva Sari Gaur Vakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I chose this verse as a series from the previous verse which was from the previous chapter, chapter 17, verse 25, about how um, Mother Earth is withholding her bounty in the form of grains and everything else that she gives, vegetables, because of the sinful and very demoniac rule that was present prior to the appearance of the saintly king who is now known as Prithu Maharaj. Uh, the earth is being pursued by the king in order to get her to feed and take care of the citizens. Now after the encounter, which we described yesterday, the earth is responding to the king why she's withholding her benefits, her grains, herbs, and various types of foodstuffs. Apalitanda dritacha, apalitanda dritacha, bhava birloka palakai, kori bhute. Tatoke hum yagarte grasam osadehi. My dear king, not only are the grains and herbs being used by non devotees, but as far as I'm concerned, I am not being properly maintained. Indeed, I'm being neglected by kings who are not punishing these rascals who have turned into thieves by using grains for sense gratification. Consequently, I've hidden all these seeds, which were meant for the performance of sacrifice. Srila Prabhupada's purport. That which happened during the time of Prithu Maharaj and his father, King Venu, is also happening at the present moment. A huge arrangement exists for the production of large-scale industrial and agricultural products. But all these products are meant for sense gratification. Therefore, despite such productive capacity, there is scarcity because the world's population is full of thieves. The word Kori Bhute indicates that the population has turned to thievery. According to Vedic understanding, men are transformed into thieves when they plan economic development for sense gratification. It is also explained in Bhagavad Gita that if one eats food grains without offering them to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, yet yet he is a thief and liable to be punished. According to spiritual communism, all properties on the surface of the globe belong to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The population has a right to use goods only after offering them to the Supreme Personality of Godhead 
This is the prop for process of accepting prashad. Unless one eats prashad, he is certainly a thief. It is the duty of the governors and kings to punish such thieves and maintain the world nicely. If this is not done, grains will no longer be produced and people will simply starve. Indeed, not only will people be obliged to eat less, but they will kill one another and eat each other's flesh. They are already killing animals for flesh, so when there will be no longer be grains, vegetables, and fruits, they will kill their own sons and fathers and eat their fresh flesh for substances, for sustenance. Om Gyan. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Bhagavad So in this particular verse, um, as Prabhupada says, that uh, um, economic development or to develop a system where people can receive the needs in order to live nicely, progressively, happily, is being put into the hands of those who are simply trying to exploit that necessity for economic gain. Now, when, the, when economic gain or when economics is put into an exploitive category, it creates reactions on all levels because food grains, the milk products, the vegetables, roots, fruits, and whatever else is naturally produced by the earth is given by God so people can live nicely and happily. There is no statement anywhere in the Shastras that economic development makes these things more uh, available. All these things have been given by God through nature so we can live nicely, happily, and so we can progress towards the goal of life, which is, of course, self-realization. Now, when that is not, no longer done, and then society takes up the uh, activities of being the providers of these natural things, they turned it into an economic industry, which is based on getting as much economic gain as possible. People need food. There is no doubt about it. You cannot live without food. And food should be healthy and plentiful, where everyone has enough. So in the world, we see scarcity, we see famine, we see starvation. But this is due to sinful life. And when these uh, natural resources are put into hands of big corporate personalities who simply try to gain materially, and this is called business, the food business, <laughs> then it becomes, as it says, thievery because everything belongs to the Lord. So by their acquisition of land, they claim that this belongs to them and therefore they use it to make large amounts of money. Now, as it says here, this accepting of food has to be done in the mood of yagya or sacrifice. And that is explained in the Bhagavad Gita, Yagya Yas Shisti Tol Shanto, Munchite Sarva Kil Visa, Bunchite Te Agam Papam, Ye Yaratman, Ye, I can't remember the last, Ye Yard, the last line I'm not sure of. But this says that one has to eat according to sacrifice. In other words, one has to offer back everything that is given to them 
as an offering to the Lord, and then it becomes prashad. And prashad simply does not mean food. It means mercy. That is the actual translation of the word prashad, but it has been connected to foodstuffs. So because this is something that the living entities perform every day, we eat two, sometimes three times a day, and therefore everything should be done in the mood of sacrifice. But well, when that is not done, and when his food is distributed for economic gain, and then of course we read yesterday where if there's too much of a supply of a particular type of food in order to keep the, what we say, the prices high, in other words, to continue to make large profits, because it says in the Manu Samhita that everyone who is engaged in business cannot make more than 25% profit from their business. That's, that's Manu Samhita. Now you see uh, businesses, they make 100%, 200, 500, and even higher percentage profit from whatever they do. And if people are good at that, they're considered to be successful. But it's an exploitation of others who have to work very hard in order to achieve the monetary funds in order to buy food, which is readily, readily available by nature. And that's why Prabhupada would say, grow your own food, keep cows, and keep bulls for tilling the land, cows to provide everything needed for healthy life and also for worship, and growing grains because the basic health foundation for food is grains and milk products. These are the, these are the staples that are needed for the human being. Vegetables and fruits are also there, but as Prabhupada said, they're extra. It's mostly grains and uh, milk products in proper proportion, of course. Uh, that is the foundation for the human society in order to live ha uh, healthily. So here we see that when people become exploitative and there is no more sacrifices offered that, and thieves are making big profits on, um, you know, growing and selling food to others. They take the farmer, they push him off the land, move him into the cities and create these factory farms where they produce large amounts of food in a very unnatural way. And then they make big money on, these, on this. When, if this continues, there will start to be a scarcity of some of the basic, and Prabhupada mentions that. I can remember clearly in some of his lectures, he said, there will be, there will be no milk products, there will be no rice, there will be no wheat, and people will simply be going, eating roots, fruit, uh, fruits, honey, and various things to stay alive. But here in this particular purport, Prabhupada says, if it come, becomes you know, a crisis, where these foodstuffs are not available anymore, then they, people will be killing their own relatives. And this is, you know, this is, sounds a little, you know, ex extreme, but this actually happened in many times when there was famine that people would actually take to killing uh, small children in order to, uh, to have food to eat. They're thinking we're gonna die, so we need to do something, we need to eat something. And because nothing else was available, they were killing others for their flesh. <laughs> so um, it sounds like, well, some kind of cannibalism that happened in the past, but it's also maybe the, uh, the horizon of the future if society continues to exploit the process of eating by making uh, food 
a economic commodity that is you have to work hard in order to get it. I remember in uh, many years ago, I came across this uh, um, uh, what was it called? It was a it was a proposed legislation to be presented to the United States government. And what it was, it was making uh, one, one cannot grow their own food anymore. You have to buy food from the local stores. It would be considered to be a uh, crime to grow your own food. And uh, fortunately that bill didn't get introduced and it didn't get passed. But this was an idea to centralize the whole idea of eating into an economic gain for a small group of people. So we see here how when Prithu Maharaj came after the rule of his father, King Vena, who was a huge demon ruling the world, the earth was, re was holding everything back and therefore she didn't provide. And now Prithu Maharaj has come. He's a saintly king. He wants to take care of the citizens. He's approaching Mother Earth to force her to uh, reveal her bountiful foodstuffs, which are necessary. So we can go on to the next verse. <laughs> So here, I'll just read the translation. Due to being stocked for a long time, all the grain seeds within me have certainly deteriorated. This is Mother Earth speaking. Therefore, you should immediately arrange to take these seeds out by the standard process, which is recommended by the Acharyas or by the Shastras. This is interesting. Here, when there's a scarcity of grain, the government should follow the methods prescribed in the Shastras and improve by the Acharyas. Thus, there will be sufficient production of grain and food scarcity and famine can be checked. The Gita recommends that we perform yagya. By the performance of yagya, sufficient clouds gather in the sky, and when there is sufficient clouds, there is sufficient rainfall. In this way, agriculture matters are taken care of. When there is sufficient grain production, the general population eats the grains and animals like cows, goats, and other domestic animals eat the grasses and grains also. Due to this arrangement, which is natural, human beings should perform the sacrifice recommended in the Shastra. And if they do so, there will be no longer any food scarcity. In Kali Yuga, the only sacrifice recommended is Sankirtan Yagya. Mm -hmm. So in this verse, there are two significant words, yogena, by the approved method, and dristena, by the exemplified by the former acharyas. One is mistaken if he thinks that by applying modern machines such as tractors, grain gain, grains can be produced. If one goes to a desert and uses a tractor, there is no possibility of producing grains. We may adopt various means, but it's essential to know that the planet Earth will stop producing grains if sacrifices are not performed. Fortunately, by the present, I'm just, I'm gonna speak now. Fortunately, by the presence of the devotees, Sankirtan Yagi is going on around the world. And because of that, the Earth is still producing. Otherwise, generally the population of the world is quite sinful. The mode of goodness is conspicuous by his absence, and people are more into sense gratification, economic development, and various types of activities for entertainment. So due to the presence of sacrifice, in the Sankirtan movement, the earth is still producing to some degree. The earth has already explained that because non-devotees are enjoying the production of food, she has reserved her food seeds for the performance of sacrifice. Now, of course, atheists will not believe in the spiritual method of producing grains. 
But whether they believe it or not, the fact remains that we are not even independent to produce grains by mechanical means. As far as the improved method is concerned, it is enjoined in the Shastras that intelligent men in this age will take to the Sankirtan movement. And by doing so, they shall worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Chaitanya, whose bodily complexion is golden and who is always accompanied by his confidential devotees to preach this Krishna conscious movement all over the world. So Prabhupada's talking about the present condition. In, the pres in his present condition, the world can only be saved by introducing this sankirtan, this Krishna consciousness movement. As we have learned from the previous verse, one who is not in Krishna consciousness is considered a thief. Even though he may be materially very advanced, a thief cannot be placed in a comfortable position. A thief is a thief and he is punishable. Because people are without Krishna consciousness, they have become thieves and consequently they are punished by the laws of material nature. No one can check this, not even by introducing so many relief funds and humanitarian institutions. Unless the people of the world take to Krishna consciousness, there will be a scarcity of food and much suffering. So this is coming as long as people continue on their path of, uh, and we're seeing how people are suffering all over the world for various reasons, now by pestilence. And if it's not pestilence, it's wars. And if it's not wars, it's scarcities. If it's not scarcity, it's, it's because of uh, overtaxation. There's always some uh, inebriates that people are, and they're, being, they're being, all being subjected to because they don't understand that um, the earth belongs to God. The earth is not our property and the earth will produce unlimited amounts of benefits in the form of various types of foodstuffs and herbs. Herbs are necessary for medicine and medicine when administered properly can cure any disease. There is no disease that cannot be cured by herbal remedies, just like um, this COVID vaccine and this COVID, uh, I'm sorry, this COVID disease, by applying the proper herbs and balancing a person's constitution, one can cure this disease. It's, we have an example. Mm, there was one, uh, I received a letter not too long ago about one devotee who was practicing Krishna consciousness in prison. And um, he came down with the virus and was quite sick. Being in prison, the, he, he was pretty much neglected. This neglect was purposeful because they want to reduce the population of the jail. So if people die, that makes it easier for them to manage. So he was totally neglected. So he just went and started to chant the holy names of the Lord. And then later he wrote a letter explaining that by chanting the holy names of the Lord continuously for a number of days, he cured, Krishna cured him of his disease of coronavirus. So um, this is the real vaccine. Enechi Asadi Maya Nasi Varagi Harinama Maha Mantra Lao Tumi Magi. That all these uh, remedies that are given to us by these uh, materialist institutions controlled by big corporations that have big plans for making millions of billions of dollars on the expense of the, on the products they sell, uh, can, uh, is simply swept away by performing Harinam Sankirtan. And here Prabhupada says, unless people take to Krishna consciousness, there will be scarcity of food and much suffering. And whatever Prabhupada says is gradually coming through, true in the course of time. And we're seeing that also. So, um, 
long as the population stays sinful. Therefore, it's our duty as devotees to perform the Sankirtan movement, the chanting of the holy names of the Lord, and introduce this as, in as many places we can, explaining that by performing this yagya, this is called Sankirtan yagya, yagyai sankirtanai prayai yajanti hi sumeda saha, by performing this yagya of Sankirtan, we actually petition and bring about the mercy of the Lord. Because by the, when the mercy of the Lord flows, then everything becomes nice. People don't want to follow the Lord. They want to do everything on their own level. And therefore, as it says here, they're stealing the property of the Lord and trying to enjoy it independently. And because of that, people are suffering. There's a lot of punishment coming. So here, these, these two verses are indicating of how Mother Earth, who is the property of the Lord, she works under the direction of the Lord. The Lord infuses his mercy in the form of the, the benefits that Mother Earth gives because we are so much dependent on Mother Earth. We don't really need cell phones and computers and so many other things, big buildings. We can live happily, nicely with whatever Mother Earth provides naturally. And this is the way people live for millions and millions of years. <laughs> but now, because of advancement, <laughs> We might call it advancement. We're, we're trying to set up this artificial lifestyle where everything becomes an economic adventure. And your success is how much money you have and how much you can use that money to get whatever you want. But that is not the Vedic scheme, nor is it Krishna's person, plan. Krishna's plan is... Uh, what is that verse? Anan Bhavanti Parjanya. That grow, grow grains, <laughs> keep cows, live simply, and chant Hare Krishna. And uh, you'll find you'll have so much more time for spiritual life and for personal interaction with other living entities. But the world is uh, now under this uh, guise that we have to work hard to get whatever we need. And we don't, uh, that is the false propaganda. Everything is provided by the Lord. All we have to do is acknowledge the supremacy of the Lord and offer back to him in sacrifice, whatever we do that is called Krishna consciousness. And the Lord will provide for everyone. He's doing that already. That is his promise. <laughs> okay, so these two verses are very, very instructive. And you'll see, if you follow the verses as it goes on in this chapter, how Mother Earth finally surrenders to Prithu and saying, yes, I see what you're saying is correct. But now you have to bring out what is within me by sacrifice. And then there's a great program. And we'll see how Mother Earth again delivers everything that the people need and more. <laughs> okay. So we'll stop there. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much. Uh, those verses are so beautiful. And yeah, it, it shows how sacrifice is so important. And otherwise, that statement was really strong. Otherwise, earth will stop producing the grains. So thank you, Maharaj, for those verses and explaining so, so nicely. Thank you so much. Uh, I request devotees, please go ahead with your questions or realizations.
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. All glory to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, thank you for a wonderful class. And this was relevant, so relevant to what is going on in the world today. Every, especially the exploitative mentality. Um, I'm just hearing news about India and what's happening in the COVID situation. And uh, the exploitative mentality extends to, to so many things where just for making profit, they are doing, uh, they are creating shortages of oxygen, medicines, selling them on black markets. And, and it's not just in general times that people are exploitative, but when people need, need each other in times of this catastrophic events, the exploitative mentality still continues. So this is so true, this verse. Uh, thank you. Yeah, when, when people become desperate, they will do anything. They'll, they'll turn into animals just to survive. Mm -hmm. Or people have a, a profit to make. They will do it. People are not, they don't understand that by acknowledging the supremacy of the Lord and offering whatever we do, then the Lord provides everything. There's no need for artificial development of industries and economic programs. Every, the Lord has already provided everything, but as he says, um, you know, Bhavan, Bhavan Bhavuti Parjanya, one has to perform sacrifice. And the sacrifice in this age is the Sankirtan Yagya. That is the main sacrifice right then. Offering our food in devotion to the Lord before we eat is a form of Yagya, sacrifice. That's also mentioned in the same chapter. The Bhagavad Gita verses in the third chapter, verses 13 and 14, Krishna speaks about this yogi, which is natural. If someone is providing whatever you need, you simply acknowledge in a very proper way, and this is this, and then this is what you have to do. It's just acknowledge the Lord doesn't want anything in return, all He wants to do is that we acknowledge his supremacy and then everything is coming from him which is true mm -hmm. if you're in the family and the father is providing for the family and you don't want to even acknowledge the father providing for everything and don't even acknowledge the existence of the father then you'd think well the father has to teach a lesson so he'll just withdraw what he gives in order for the family members to wake up so Krishna will do that through the agency of material energy. He'll, because they don't acknowledge the benefits that are coming from him, that's a simple sacrifice. And then the laws of material energy will work to, for, and for punishment also. It's very simple. We follow it. Thank you. The Lord Krishna. provides for everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Did that answer your question? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. I mean, it was a, a question and a comment about because it uh, it was a. Sorry, Maharaj. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Please begin again. Yeah, it was a question and a comment both. So yes, Mara, thank you for the for the response. Thank you. Okay. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for again choosing really wonderful verses. There's so much in these verses to really study. I want to play the devil's advocate over here for a minute. And I want to say, 
the Lord is my father, I'm his child, why should I have to do anything? I mean, he's supposed to take care of me and I'm supposed to be taken care of. Why are you Hare Krishna is demanding that we should do this and we should kind of enjoy God's property? Can I not have a good time while I'm here? Uh, why you want to spoil my enjoyment? No, yeah, go ahead, enjoy, have a good time, but acknowledge where all this is coming from. That's all. The Lord just wants you to just to, to perform some simple sacrifice, which is a form of acknowledgement of whatever, whatever he's giving. That's all. I use that example in the family. If the children are getting everything and they just simply forget about the father and reject the father, then the father may decide to do something to wake them up, you know. That is going, you know, people have this idea, well, you know, I have a right because of my position. But even a, a civilized person understands that whatever they receive is coming from someone. And if you receive something coming from someone and that helps you, an intelligent person will immediately want to thank or show some reciprocation. Well, you think we come into this world, there's that verse from the uh, 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. There's that verse. Um, Devarshi Utatma Nir Nam Putrin Nam Nakinkano Rayan Rani Jarajam. Sarvat Maria Sharanam Mukunda Yato Mukunda Pitiritya Kartum. That as soon as one comes, takes birth in this world, they, they are actually a debtor to the forefathers, to the parents, to the ancestors, to the sages, to the demigods, and to people in general. Mm -hmm. So we have to pay back all of these debts. But there's one easy way, you know, the one who performs service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Mukunda, all their debts, all what we say, uh, paid, mm -hmm. taken care of. So therefore, you know, when you take the Krishna consciousness, you don't have to try to satisfy all these different departments of people who are providing something. Papa said, you're getting sunlight from the sun. You're getting air from the atmosphere. So who's supplying it? You know, he uses the example. Sunlight is like energy. And if you're sitting in your house and you need energy to heat your house, you know, there is a company that provides it. And if you have to pay the bill, <laughs> You don't pay the bill, they cut off your energy. <laughs> <laughs> so people are, are thieves because they're taking God's gifts without acknowledging God. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That helps in my preaching. Thank you. Mm Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri. All glories to Shri Prabhupada and all glories to Your Holiness. Um, Guru Maharaj, I, I just want to follow up with uh, Sri Devi Mataji's question. Uh, like, um, so as you said, if you take up uh, Krishna consciousness, we are not no no longer indebted to all other people um, when we take birth here. But what about the children who are born to us? Um, we give um, birth to children. So, what about our kids, uh, Guru Maharaj? So. Uh, I heard that when we are uh, indebted to anybody, they are born as our kids. <laughs> They'll uh, always demand something from us. Mm. 
Well, yeah, yeah. the main duty of a parent is to guide the guide their children and give them an opportunity to become Krishna conscious. That's the main duty. That's um, that's mentioned in. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Chaitanya Nitai Hare Krishna. Thank you for coming and joining us. Um, yeah, but there is personal care also. Provide for their education. Provide for their, you yeah, know, general well-being. That's the responsibility of the parents. And as the child children grow up, they have to learn, you know, what is their responsibilities in different phases of life until they take the position of becoming parents themselves. So yeah, Prashab Day says, don't become mother, don't become father, don't become teacher, don't become guru, unless you can deliver your disciples, children, students from the cycle of birth and death. So that very strong statement in the fifth chapter of Srimad, uh, fifth canto Srimad Bhagavatam to explain the responsibility. So yeah, you have a responsibility to your children and they also have a responsibility as children towards you. So you have to also teach them that responsibility. Yeah, that's that's the duty of a, of a, what we call a leader. A, parents are considered leaders of their children. Spiritual masters are leaders of their disciples. The teachers are leaders of their students. So we always have those who are in charge of others are responsible for the welfare of others. And in this case, it mentions that we have to direct them towards Krishna consciousness. And do our best. Of course, they have their independence and, and will, but if it's done from the early childhood, it has much more chance to develop uh, organically and naturally. As it gets on later in life, it becomes harder for someone to adopt Krishna consciousness, but it's also possible. So yeah, we have responsibilities. We also, as uh, we also have responsibilities to our parents. If our parents are still living, we have to make sure that you know they're getting whatever they need to live nicely. They may be elderly and become dependent. It's not like society says, "Oh, when I get old." You know, you just put them on the side or you send them to places where they can live with a bunch of other old people and then they're, you pay the money and they're taken care of. That's not, that's not human society. That's Rakshasha society. So yeah, there is responsibility. <laughs> you can't negate responsibility. But when we do it in a Krishna conscious way, everyone benefits not only materially, but spiritually. That's the real benefit. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. So if even if we are um, indebted, uh, um, indebted to them in our previous lives, so when we uh, they they are born as our kids, and uh, um, if we are bringing them into Krishna consciousness, uh, that all will be nullified. Uh, Guru Maharaj, can we um, understand like that? Hmm. Well, it's not always the case that our children were connected to us in previous life. There are cases like that, but it's not this, usually the connection comes by karma. So we have a particular karma and they have a certain particular karma at the time of their last departure. So based on their karma, they go into a particular family. And karma's, you know, there's many aspects to karma. So it's not necessarily the case where someone who is the parent, you know, they were children in last life and vice versa. That does happen, but that's not the norm. That's just certain situations. When karma is very, very, very much the same, that will happen generally. 
but that's not always the case. And it's more, that's more of the unlikely cases. The more likely cases is if people come to us as children, according to their particular karma, that's all. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Now it's very clear. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So you don't have to get back at your children. <laughs> <laughs> no, good That's not the idea. That's not the idea. No. <laughs> Thank you. Are you wrong? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, my question is, uh, like from these two verses, then is it okay? I mean, should we understand that even in Kali Yuga, uh, I mean, now we have Sankirtan uh, movement, but even before that, like there have been many sacrifices going on. And that's why we are, the Mother Earth is producing the grains. Uh, that's why? And that's why the Mother Earth is uh, producing the grains. Should we understand like that? Yeah. Okay. The uh, country karma is like that. The, uh, just like in America, the Red Indians were very, they were somewhat pious. Yeah. They were a combination of the mode of passion and some, of, some quality of the mode of goodness, like that. And so they respected Mother Earth as worshipful. If you know the folklore of the Indian culture, which was before, that's how India got his name as Indians, you know. The word Indians was given by some sailor who uh, was looking for India and wound up in America. <laughs> and he named them Indians. <laughs> oh. but we, that's how, yeah, that's how the, the Indians, yeah, like that. <laughs> The, India, India, the American Indians were given the name Indians because people were looking for India. And the settlers coming from Europe, the sailors, America Vespucci, he wound up and he was an Italian, you know, sailor that wound up in America. And so that, that was only around the beginning of the 1700s, the end of the 1600s that people were coming into America. Before then, this land was quite beneficial bountiful and pious because of the, the worship of the Red Indians. But then, you know, the Westerners came in, took over and exploited everything and set up their industry. Mm. And then it was the, uh, the Industrial Revolution, machines and high level production, people working in factories, people being pushed off the land, which is still happening today. Now we have a corporate society that provides everything you need or what you think you need. They make, they make sure that they're going to make money on everything about your life. <laughs> so, yeah, so we live in a very dysfunctional atmosphere. That's why Prabhupada said we have to go back to the land. If we're going to live in the future, because Kali Yuga is only going to get worse. Don't expect things to get better. It, it will only get worse. The only thing that'll make it better is the, the Harinam Sankirtan movement. Then things will only will increase. Otherwise, society will go on in the same way. Exploitation, people will become more and more sinful and there'll be more and more suffering. That will continue. And it'll, 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 it'll really start to grow more and more and more. But devotees are meant to be the leaders of society by showing the ideal lifestyle. And that's back to the land. <laughs> more rural communities, more uh, environmental development, keeping of cows, all these things are natural for the human being and very healthy lifestyle also. 
the cities, the city is another problem said it's another name for city is called hell. <laughs> cities are hell. <laughs> They're all about sense gratification and economic development. That's all. Yeah, yes, Maharaj, that's so true. So this can be also one strong point for preaching the people uh, about, I mean, we can share the importance of sacrifice also and how it is related to food. Can we do that? Yeah, yeah, like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. That's why we, we distribute prashad, prashad yeah. distribution. We said, here is very nice, simple, healthy foodstuffs that will give you spiritual benefit also. And, and 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 material nourishment. Mm -hmm. But Prabhupada wanted that. He said every temple in our society sh should do food distribution within a 10 mile radius. Mm -hmm. He said no one within the 10 mile radius of any temple should be without food. And then he set up his programs for cooking and distributing food. Now we have what is called food for life and other forms of food distribution, but we're not doing it enough like that. And people like our food. Yes. It's very tasty. But they don't know they're getting spiritual benefit. And then we can also teach him, well, here, this is how to worship the Lord in the kitchen. You cook and you put a picture of the Lord there and then you offer what you cook, which is acceptable, you no know, meat, fish, eggs, like that, to the Lord. And then you take, and then it is called sacrifice or the mercy of the Lord. So we can teach that. We should teach that, yeah. Thank we you. are teaching it, but yeah. not enough. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, devotees, are there any more questions or comments for Maharaj here? humble obeisances again I have a question should we take every opportunity or any opportunity we get to talk about the holy name and to tell people about the holy name uh, you know or we should try to see where people are at before we say all those things well both Lord Chaitanya gave the instruction he said, by my, by my command, be guru, save the land. Whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Whoever you meet, teach them to chant Hare Krishna. So it might not be always easy to do that, but we can find opportunities. We do it in a systematic way, but we can also do it in an individual way. We should not hide the fact that we're devotees because the people know we are religious they also might be interested, and then we have something to speak about. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Any questions from anyone who doesn't normally ask questions? <laughs> Guru Maharaj, my obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Done.
Um, I had a question. I know that everything materially seems to be going downhill, like with AI and so many things, but um, because it's the golden age, isn't it also everything's getting better too spiritually? Well, the, that's up to us. <clears throat> we don't want to get stuck in our progress of Krishna consciousness and somewhat become entangled with the material society. We have to remain, remain aloof from the material society and continue to practice our Krishna consciousness and spread the holy name. We have to continue to have programs. We have to continue to have forms of outreach. We have to continue to do Harinam Sankirtan. We have to continue to see if we can develop these uh, farm communities. There's so many projects that we have. So all our focus is in developing and propagating, propagating these projects. So um, the danger is we get a little lazy and we get a little complacent on what we have. And we no longer try to reach out or to take part in, and, you know, trying to spread Krishna consciousness in some form or another. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So there's always something we can connect with. Yes, I always say that, that there's always room for improvement and always a way to go outside of the box to spread Krishna's glories. Yeah, we don't have to invent the wheel. It's already there. If anyone who begins chanting Hare Krishna, that is a great achievement. A person now has begun their path back to Godhead and eventually it'll become successful. To plant that seed is important. And wherever the seeds are planted, let's water it. And if there's some water and the watering is already being done, then we can grow more and more devotees, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So either we can do something or we can connect with something that's already being done. <laughs> I just love your lectures, Gumaraj. It just everything you say hits home, and I just have full faith in your words. It's I just repeat Prabhupada. That's all. There's nothing creative. Well, I'm trying to put it together according to how Prabhupada is explaining it. But Prabhupada gave us everything. He gave us the present when he was there. He told us about the past. And he gave us formulas for the future. He gave us a big picture. And he also gave us the projects by which to fill in that picture. Prabhupada's plan for Krishna consciousness is huge. It's a complete, uh, it's a complete uh, alteration of the entire way we live. It's a revolution. It's not just becoming religious. It's changing the social, economical, political, aesthetic, moral, all aspects of society, bring it back to its original state that everything is coming from Krishna. The original medicine, Ayurveda, the original political rule as explained in Srimad Bhagavatam and in Manu Samhita, and the social system, as explained by Krishna and Bhagavad Gita. All that, everything Prabhupada wanted to do to transform the whole entire society back towards, you know, their natural and most, you know, beneficial way to live. Mm -hmm. So we as a devotees, we have to create that microcosm within this big misery, what we say, macrocosm. And then our ma ma microcosm 
we build on it and, be, and, and, and try to bring more and more people in. We have to be ideal in whatever we do. And then our preaching has effect. That's amazing, yes. Thank you. Much appreciated, Guru Maharaj. Okay, did you write that letter yet? Uh, which letter? You read my email. I don't want to speak about it. In, in oh, public, okay. But you know, remember I, 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 and you said it was a good idea. You were going to write the letter. Um, yes, I'll check my emails and I'll, I'll email you back. It's what you wrote me about and I gave you the response. Oh, yes, for, yes. Yeah. I, I'm very forgetful, please forgive me. <laughs> yeah, and we have a voice, but if we don't use it, then... What's yes. the use? <laughs> that's my that's my problem. I don't communicate enough, you know. I just yeah, Hare Krishna. That, that's enough. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> okay, we looks like we re reached the end of our discussion. We thank all the devotees for coming. And we'll continue in these series of verses from the fourth canto with Maharaj Pritu and Mother Earth. Because to me, they seem to be something that we can learn a lot of practical understandings on how to deal with the present uh, social and political situation that is presently upon us. And get Prabhupada's vision for the future. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for your valuable time and association today. All glories to you, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you, all devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Don't forget my transcription. <laughs> I'm not forgetting, Guru Maharaj. I'll get down to it today. I promise. Thank you.